Hi everybody, this is Adrian Duckenfield, pre-sales engineer for UK and Ireland. Thanks for taking the time to view this video today. In this video, we are going to be looking at policy-based routing and multi-WAN. So multi-WAN is a, a utility we can use to manage multiple internet connections on the box. So before we get going, let's just take a quick look at my config and see what we've got here. So if I go to my network configuration, you'll see I have two internet connections configured. So I have one up here called primary, and I have one down here called backup line, which are two completely separate ISPs. Now, you're probably already aware, but the, the, the great thing with a watch guard is I can configure any interface to do any job. So I can literally take another interface down here, select that to be an external, and then perhaps I would call this, you know, WAN3 or something like that, give it my ISP details. But for today's, you know, for today's demo, we're going to stick literally just with these two WAN connections. So my primary and my backup. Okay, right. So I go across up here and we have the multi-WAN tab. And when we go into here, we can actually configure how we use these internet connections. Now, the default is routing table. And this basically means look at the rule base. And the rule base will say the traffic is going from here to here and in the to field I can specify which internet connection I want it to use now by default it says any external but it would actually only use the one in uh, the primary line it wouldn't use anything else what I can choose to do is change that so I can put it to round robin now with round robin it's going to load balance out of the internet connections but it's not going to do a particularly great job of it so You've, you may have heard of round robin before. It's an algorithm used for load balancing, but it doesn't actually use any logic. So it could put more traffic down one line than the other. In fact, it will do that. Um, probably not by very much, but it's not going to be the best way of load balancing. But it's okay. We could choose to do failover. So that's going to use the primary line. If it dies, use the secondary line, so on and so forth. And then we have interface overflow. Now, if I did want to load balance, this would be the option I would choose to use. This is going to monitor the amount of connections out of each internet connection and load balance accordingly. So for example, if I click on configure, what I can do here is set the thresholds. So perhaps my primary line is 100 meg and my backup line is a 10 meg ADSL or something like that. What it's now going to do is load balance accordingly, and it's obviously going to put much more traffic down the 100 meg line and small amounts of traffic down the 10 meg. So it's never going to flood that 10 meg line. It's going to load balance accordingly. So I'm going to leave it set to that. Now, beneath here, we have a link monitor, and this is a pretty important tool. You want to configure this. This is used to check things out on the internet to see if your line is up or down. And that's important when it comes to failing over. So first off, I'm going to look at this ping option down here. Now, what I quite often see is this. Um, everyone knows the Google IP addresses, so everyone puts them in there. Now, there is actually a bit of a problem by doing that. And the problem would be that Google one day, one of their guys in their IT team are going to be bored, drinking a coffee, you know, they'll be looking through the firewall logs because he's got nothing better to do. And he's going to say, why is this IP address pinging me every few seconds? In fact, why has it been doing that for the last three years? Block. Now, as soon as they decide to block you from doing that, your firewall is going to think the internet's gone down, and it hasn't. So my advice, if you want, when you put an IP address in here, is it needs to be the, I'm making this up now, it needs to be the default gateway of your ISP. And that's, I've made that IP address up, but that's probably the default gateway of my ISP. Because if that goes down, if I can't reach my ISP's default gateway, I do not have internet access. And they are not going to block me from doing that. The next option, I can do a like a get request to a domain name. And the exact same principle applies in here. I'm going to want to put something in here which is within my control. So I can make sure I don't block myself from doing this check. So I'm going to put in my website. 
like so mydomain.com that's my website right and this website is sat behind uh, another firewall that I own or have access to which is probably in a data center somewhere but I can log into that firewall and I can add this public IP address to the exceptions list so again things like default packet handling or IPS or whatever isn't going to kick in and block this connection because I, I don't want it to do that so I'm going to use my website to make sure it's okay beneath that we have this option here if I tick this it basically means if both of these things are unreachable then the internet must have gone down so therefore you fail it over if I untick this if one of these fails it thinks the internet's gone down now it could do but I would always recommend going with both because at the end of the day if your internet's gone down you won't better get to both of these things so therefore that's going to be much more accurate now beneath this we have the probe settings so what we're going to do here is this says every 15 seconds we will do a ping we will do a get request then what we have let's close my emails you don't want to see that stuff I don't even want to see that stuff then what we have is deactivate after so this says after three consecutive failures in a row we will then drop this line out of the routing table keep checking though if it comes back after three successfuls we then bring it back into the routing table again so I find those defaults to be pretty much okay I've never really had to tweak around them but you know if you've got a pretty flaky internet connection perhaps it's a satellite line and it's just not very good you can choose to increase these thresholds if you need to um, you know just to stop the line from flapping open and closed right so I have that configured now you need to go ahead and you need to do that for all of the internet connections you have so every line can check what it needs to so again I'm going to put in here the default gateway of this ISP and again I'm going to put in my website mydomain.com both of those happy days so now both of my lines are checking out to make sure things are okay if we move across to this advanced tab we have what's called sticky connections I don't know if you guys have heard of that before um, but basically what it is is it makes sure the traffic carries on using the route it was originally using for a period of time now what I mean by that is if you were to browse to let's say a banking website HSBC and you log in um, now I've got my firewall set to load balance right I'm using interface overflow once I've logged in using interface 0 on my firewall ISP 1 and I click a link inside the HSB web HSBC website what I don't want it to do is then start using my other WAN connection because that's a different source IP address and HSBC don't know anything about that so of course it's going to kick me back out to the login screen so sticky connections make sure that you use the same the same route for a period of time and what we're saying here is after three minutes of inactivity we will then forget about that sticky connection and I find that to be okay so that's basically log into a website don't touch anything for three minutes and it will forget you used that route and then it could possibly use the other WAN connection it might not it might still use the same one but it could use the other one if it's set to low balance um, what you typically find with websites where you have to log in which do require sticky connections their idle timeouts are generally less than three minutes if I'm honest um, so this is typically okay but if you have problems you know now where this is and you know you can increase those thresholds if you need to this section down here is what happens if a line has failed over and then it comes back up again we can control how that traffic is put back into the original route it was using so the default actually says immediately fail back so you see here stop all active connections and put it back to you using the interface it was using originally now I think that's a little bit aggressive so what I'm going to do is change that to this option here which says gradually fail back so in other words you're going to carry on using the interface you were using but over a period of time all of the connections will go back to using their original interface so it's it's a much more subtle way of doing it um, if someone's just browsing a web page they're not going to know any difference but if they were logged into a website like I mentioned a minute ago you know if it's set to immediately fail that would kick them out that website 
which isn't the end of the world. They just have to log back in again. But this gradual feed uh, fail back is, I think, a much calmer way of doing it. Under the logging and notification, what we can do is I would probably tick it to do this. So if you have Dimension configured, your firewall is talking to, to Dimension and you have an SMTP server um, in use via Dimension as well, this can send you an email notification. And I, I would probably want to know if my internet line's gone down. Um, so, because, you know, if you don't tick this, you, you won't even know it's failed over. You, it would just work still, wouldn't it? So it's probably a good idea to set an email notification just so you know that it's actually happened. Okay, so I am load balancing at the moment. Let's take a look at how we handle this in the rules. So let's pick a rule at random. So these users and groups here are going out of any external. Now, any external is the default object that we put in the rules, um, which is great. And because it says any external, this one will load balance. If I removed any external and was specific with my interface, so primary line, this rule will now only ever use the primary line. It won't load balance. Uh, even this policy-based routing, which we'll look at in a second, that wouldn't take precedence either. It's going to use that primary line. If in order to use the multiple internet connections, you have to give the policy permission to do so. So it has to be any external or primary line and backup line, however you want to do it. But you've got to give the policy permission to actually access the interfaces it needs access to in order to load balance or fail over. So that's now going to load balance. Beneath this, we have policy-based routing, which is a great little utility. It allows you to um, override what we've configured in the multi-WAN on a per policy basis. So with this policy, it's load balancing. If I tick this down here, it's now going to use that primary internet connection. And if I configure failover, it's now going to fail over to the backup if I need to. So a, an example could be you have uh, all of your web browsing load balancing out of both those WAN connections. But perhaps I have my business critical apps like email, VoIP, that kind of thing, going out of my backup line only. Uh, and if it fails, then go and use the other 100 meg line or, or something along those lines, you know. So it gives you the flexibility of deciding which interface is used on a per policy basis if you don't want it to use any external. And that is multi-WAN and policy-based routing in a nutshell. As you see, it's really easy to configure. It's a great feature to have. Um, an ADSL line these days is a cheap thing to have, so most people are buying them to have them as a, as that backup if they need it to. At least now you can see you can see how to configure the backup, how to consider load uh, consider load balancing, or even the policy-based routing. I hope you guys find that useful. Um, Tune in next week where there'll be more exciting videos with new features to show you guys. Uh, it's good talking to you and I'll speak to you again real soon. Thanks very much.